Hello folks and welcome back to my channel. A couple weeks ago I did a video all about the difference between surgical steel and implant grade steel and I really enjoyed making that and I enjoyed all of the feedback from you about how useful learning about the differences in these grades of metal and what we're putting in our body when we're getting piercings and how much more informed and educated that made y'all feel as clients and as consumers and how that helped you with making decisions for safe jewelry. Now the reason why I wanted to make that video is because there is just so much blatant misinformation about surgical steel and what it's used for and what it's safe for and a lot of folks get taken advantage of and get hurt. Obviously the follow-up to that I've got to talk about different types of titanium because just like with steel these low quality companies are learning the buzzwords, they're learning what people look for, and they're marketing titanium jewelry as hypoallergenic and safe that's not. So let's get into it, what type of titanium jewelry you actually wanna be putting in your body. Now much like steel, not all titanium is created equal. There's titanium that's gonna be really great, really hypoallergenic, really safe for you to wear in your piercings, but there's also titanium that's kind of garbage for you to put in your piercings that's really unsafe, that's really low quality, and can cause just as many issues for you as surgical steel and mystery metals can. So it's not just as simple as saying, oh, well I learned about the difference between surgical steel and implant grade steel, I'm just gonna stick with titanium to be safe. There is still bad titanium on the market. So just like with steel, it's very important to make sure that we're getting something that is implant grade. Just to review, implant grade materials are regulated through companies like ISO or ASTM and they set forth standards that say this material must be made to these exact chemical specifications, these exact working specifications in order to be safe to be implanted in the body. So something that is biocompatible enough that we can put a piece of it in someone's chest or in someone's leg or in someone's shoulder and it's not gonna cause adverse reactions. Now when we're looking at titanium jewelry online, you'll see a lot of different grades of titanium listed and the most popular one you're gonna see is ASTM F136. Now ASTM F136 is the ASTM designation for wrought titanium six aluminum for vandium, extra low interstitial for surgical implants and surgical applications. This specific designation of titanium is strictly really for use in surgical implants and surgical applications. And there are very strict limitations for exact chemical composition, as well as tension and bend tests. So basically when they are looking at different types of titanium, if it does not meet the exact chemical compound and all of the exact necessary properties, it cannot be listed as ASTM F136. It has to meet all of these very specific tolerances. And these are designed with a, a bunch of different researchers who look at how these materials interact with the body, look at how they interact with wounds, look at how they heal in pacemakers and synthetic joints and dental implants and have determined the exact safest type of titanium that you can use for these applications. That is the type of titanium that you want to work with. And all of the companies that we work with, that I work with, that the Association of Professional Piercers work with are using that type of titanium. They're either using that or they're using ASTM F1295, which is a newer designation for implantation that we've really been using in the industry. I would say, I think like the past seven years, I think seven years ago is when industrial strength first started using um, the 1295 with some really good success. It has some similar properties to F136 um, and some slightly different properties, particularly when it comes to anodizing or coloring titanium jewelry. Um, but it's also like a strictly implant grade designation. You can also see I've picked the perfect t-shirt to wear for today's video because this is from when Industrial Strength was advertising, uh, starting to work with a new implant grade titanium. So yes, I'm a fucking nerd, okay? Now, the other type of titanium that you'll see very, very commonly on the market, uh, especially outside of the US, you still see it a lot in the US, but I see it the most in other countries, is G2 titanium or grade two titanium. And this is another grade of titanium. 
Just like there's all sorts of different recipes to bake a cake and you can put all sorts of different things in your chocolate cake, you can put all sorts of different things in your recipe for titanium and it's each gonna come out a little bit different uh, with some slightly different properties. Now, ASTM G2 is a real ASTM ranking for a type of titanium that you can use, but per the ASM and ASTM websites, G2 titanium is most commonly used for airframe components, heat exchangers, condenser tubing, and pickling baskets. Notice that I did not say surgical implants or surgical applications. Now it's still a really good type of titanium. And if you needed to build the frame of an airplane, it's gonna be great. If you need condenser tubing, G2 titanium has got your back. But we are talking about jewelry that we are putting in people's bodies. And not just that, but oftentimes we're putting in a fresh wound, which means it's really important we're using designations of titanium and different materials that are designed to go in the body like this. You might be asking yourself, Lynn, why would they use titanium that's for airplanes for body jewelry? Uh, and the answer, of course, comes down to money and profit. G2 titanium is much more affordable than implant grade titanium because it's held to much less strict standards. Um, it is honestly like relatively difficult to manufacture and produce implant grade titanium. That's like F136 um, and those similar designations. It it has to be very specific because it's going into a person's body. So G2 titanium is going to be more widely accessible. It's going to be cheaper. And most of these companies know, ugh, darn it, they've caught on to the surgical steel thing. Now the new popular thing is titanium. So they can make stuff out of G2 titanium and advertise it on their website. Titanium prong setting, titanium ring. And you look at that and you go, oh, it's titanium, so it's safe. And don't look down in the little footnotes on the item description where it says G2 titanium. And they're counting on the fact that most people aren't going to look, or if they're going to look, they're not going to know what it means. They're just going to see G2 titanium and go, wow, they even list the type of titanium. Like this must be safe. And so it all boils down to misleading marketing and capitalism, unfortunately. But if you are looking for titanium body jewelry, for safe titanium body jewelry, you really want it to be implant grade and you can look for that through that ASTM F136 or ASTM F1295. And if you're ever unsure, stick with verified reputable vendors who you trust to be telling you the truth about what they're selling you and using good quality stuff. The Association of Professional Piercers has a new body jewelry verification program where experienced trained piercers are going through the jewelry produced by all sorts of different companies. They're looking not just at the materials they're working with, but the surface finish, the stone settings. They're making sure everything is applicable and safe for piercings. So if you're really concerned, stick with body jewelry verification program approved brands. They work with international brands so you can find these resources no matter where in the world you're living and they're really making sure that folks are getting safe, high quality stuff for their piercings. Please folks, don't get taken advantage of by catchy marketing terms. Just because it's titanium doesn't mean it's safe. Now you know the good stuff to look for. I hope this helps. I'm sure we'll sit down and hang out again soon. I would love to do more materials geeking out with y'all if you are liking this series. And yeah, thanks for hanging out and chatting. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.